Hello and welcome to the 49ers First and 10 podcast, 10 minutes of the most up-to-date 49ers news, first thing in the morning. Happy New Year, Faithful. I'm your host, Brianna McDonald, and I'm joined by 49ers team reporter, Lindsay Pilares. The 49ers started 2024 as the NFC's number one seed after defeating the Washington Commanders 27 to 10. Then watching the Arizona Cardinals upset the Philadelphia Eagles. So Lindsay, you were in the mix watching the team celebrate after the game. What was that like? Yeah, it all happened very quickly. You know, the end of regulation of the 49ers game they were celebrating the win obviously a big accomplishment for them in week 17 and then it kind of all came into fruition that there was essentially a very tight game happening in Philadelphia the last piece of the puzzle that the 49ers would need um, in order to clinch that number one seed in week 17, it was very within reach. Um, And then of course, James Connor from the Arizona Cardinals punches in that last rushing touchdown to put the Cardinals in front and really seal the game uh, for Arizona. And then with that win, of course, the 49ers got to get the number one seed. I know that there's a viral footage uh, going around the internet right now. And you see, uh, Brandon Ayuk, Debo Samuel, and I believe George Kittle um, all looking at a screen of one of our beat reporters. Um, and it, it was just, it was a lot of that. Um, I was outside the locker room as that Arizona Eagles game was in its final seconds. And as soon as the clock hit zero, you just hear a bunch of screaming and yelling and celebrating. Um, and I do think that was a very special moment for the 49ers. Um Not totally unexpected because the Lions uh, did lose on Saturday night. So that was one piece of the scenario that happened. But I think having it just all all come together so quickly, um, it made the win in Washington just that much sweeter. Wow, what a special time for this team. But let's dive a bit more into Sunday's game. We talked about it before, how this could be an opportunity for quarterback Brock Purdy and the 49ers offense to bounce back after that Christmas game against the Baltimore Ravens. So what did you learn from Purdy's performance and how did the offense look out there? Yeah, I think it was the bounce back performance that the 49ers really needed after having a really uncharacteristic night against the Ravens uh, where it just seemed like a lot of things weren't going their way. And again, just five turnovers um, as a team, just not generally what you've seen from this 2023 49ers team. Um, you know, Brock Purdy got back to his winning ways, connected on 22 of 28 pass attempts, 230 yards, and another passer rating above 120. And that 230 uh, passing yards is an incredibly important number uh, because he needed 229 yards to break the 49ers uh, single season passing yards record and he did it now he now has 4,280 passing yards in 2023 Um, that's a franchise best for Brock Purdy so when you talk about bounce back performances what a way to do it uh, no interceptions and then also just a beautiful off schedule play to Brandon Ayuk for that final touchdown Um, you know I think it just all came back together for Brock Purdy he got back to doing exactly what he's what we've seen him do for the entire 2023 season. So just kind of good to silence any chatter outside the building. There was never any, um, you know, any doubt that that would happen. But I think just to show the world that okay, we're back. It was a really, really good game, and obviously that performance by Brock Purdy was made possible by a really great day from Brandon Ayuk, seven catches, 114 yards. Debo Samuel, five catches, 37 yards, has that touchdown. Brandon Ayuk had the touchdown. Uh, George Kittle had three catches for 29 yards, and that got him to over the 1,000-yard receiving yards mark for him. That's the third time in his career that he's done that. So again, just accolades all over the offense. Um, And then you saw Elijah Mitchell also have himself a day. 
17 carries for 80 yards and a touchdown. So contributions from all over the place and a really, really great day for Brock Purdy. Yeah, you mentioned it just quickly there, but let's take a closer look at the 49ers run game against Washington. We saw Elijah Mitchell step in and take over early in the third quarter. So can you provide more details as to why Christian McCaffrey was sidelined? And on the other hand, how Elijah Mitchell maintained the dominance in the run game? Yeah, we got some more clarity on Christian McCaffrey's injury. It turned out to be a mild calf strain that he suffered against the Washington Commanders. And that's what took him out in the second half. So that was a really big opportunity for Elijah Mitchell to step up and take over those lead running back duties um, mid-game and he did a fantastic job like I mentioned 17 carries 80 yards um, also had a touchdown and that was his first touchdown of the season his first time scoring since week 18 of last season so a really really solid performance by Elijah Mitchell and I think he doesn't get enough shine just because he has been dealing with you know back and forth knee injuries pretty much all through last year, some of this year as well. But we heard head coach Kyle Shanahan talk about just how dependable Elijah Mitchell is and that when he's fully healthy, this is the type of performance that you're going to see from him. Um, So I think just a really great thing to see from him, and especially in Week 18 when Christian McCaffrey is not expected to play, uh, just given the 49ers' playoff positioning. They've secured the number one seed, the first round bye. So this Week 18 game is not meaningless because obviously the 49ers care about each one of their contests, but in order to position themselves in the best way for the playoffs, you want to get your injured players, your veteran starters, your key playmakers some time to rest and recuperate in order to be ready for that divisional game. So it's very likely that you will see a lot more of Elijah Mitchell this week. Also Jordan Mason, um, especially with Christian McCaffrey, just not in play for week 18. All right. Well, now's a good time to check in on NFL power rankings as we prepare for the regular season finale. So Lindsay, how are the experts grading the 49ers this week? Yeah. So the 49ers end ended up being exactly where they were last week, which is very, very close to the top of those NFL power rankings. Um, Pretty much number two across the board. Um, But I do think that the commentary was a lot kinder in week 17. Um, Basically just reflecting that this week 17 San Francisco 49ers is what we've seen the entirety of that 2023 season. I think you know, everyone kind of understands week 16 was an off week, uncharacteristic. This was the performance they needed to bounce back and also to have the performance they did in Washington and then get the help that they needed um, from that Lions Cowboys game and that Arizona Cardinals Eagles game and then be able to clinch the number one seed. Uh, a healthy 49ers team is a very formidable group. And so time really is the best thing for these 49ers that have just gotten some nicks and bruises throughout the season. They will have a lot of week 18 to rest and recuperate. Same thing with the bye week. And then come the weekend of January 20th, that's when, you know, the real postseason work begins for them. All right. So as we look ahead to week 18 against the Los Angeles Rams at Levi Stadium, What are some injuries we should be monitoring and what's going to be head coach Ka Shanahan's approach to this game in balancing tempo, but also giving rest to the guys who need it? So this week presents an interesting position for the 49ers because their playoff path is set. They have home field advantage. They have that first round by they're going to be playing the weekend of January 20th. You want your injured players, like you mentioned, to get the time they need to rest and recuperate. But you also want your team to continue its flow that it has and has had for you know a number of weeks throughout this season. And then also you need to balance the fact that you only have 53 guys on the roster. Seven have to be inactive for a game. Um, so you really can't rest as many players as you'd like. Um, so that is something that is going to be a topic of discussion for head coach Kyle Shanahan and his coaching staff to find what that best personnel will be for week 18. We already know that running back Christian McCaffrey, who is the 49ers leading rusher, has a mild calf strain. Do not expect him to be out there. Um, And then also cornerback Ambry Thomas actually had a broken hand, played with that broken hand in week 17, had surgery on Tuesday. Don't expect to see him out there on week 18. And then we've got 
Another really long list, which I will run through, uh, Ross Dwelly, still dealing with that high ankle sprain. It's not likely that he's going to be ready to go this week. Eric Armstead has been dealing with separate foot and knee issues. The plan is to rest him in week 18, have him ready to go for the playoffs. You have wide receiver Juwan Jennings and tackle Jalen Moore, who are still in the concussion protocol as of Monday. We'll find out more later today. Um, And then you've got safety Jair Brown, who was dealing with a knee sprain. He's, uh, you know, a young player that has stepped up for all pro safety. Talano Hufanga, who suffered a season and ending injury. Um, He will continue to rehab. And then that chance to play in week 18, still unclear. And then wide receiver Ray Ray McLeod, who is also the team's return specialist. He's going to have his IR practice window opened this week. So he's been out for the past four weeks uh, due to a rib injury. We're going to see him come back this week, but still unclear of whether we'll see him play against the Rams. So like I mentioned, really, really long list for the 49ers right now. All right. Well, on another note, defensive lineman Eric Armstead joined the latest episode of the You've Got Mail podcast. So could you give us a sneak peek as to what you guys talked about and what he shared about being the 49ers Walter Payton Man of the Year nominee? Yeah, I think that was really the focus. You know, um, I think a lot of the focus of You've Got Mail is learning more about these players and what they are passionate about off the field, um, what makes them who they are and for Eric Armstead, it really is his work in the community. He is a four-time Walter Payton Man of the Year nominee by the 49ers. And I think right now, to all of our listeners, you have a very unique opportunity uh, to help him win the fan vote. Um, and Bree, I think you should tell them more about that. Definitely. So today, January 3rd, is the last day of double voting for the Walter Payton Man of the Year Nationwide Charity Challenge. And Faithful, you can be sure to vote on X by posting hashtag Walter Payton Man of the Year Challenge along with Eric Armstead or his handle at Eric Armstead. Or you can also vote on... You can also vote for Armstead directly on NFL.com slash man of the year. But that will do it for today. So thank you so much, Lindsay, for joining me in this update. Don't forget to follow First and 10 on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Turn on the notifications so you're in the know when we post any breaking news updates. And thank you, Faithful, for tuning in. <laughs>